What's up YouTube? Today I'm going to run through my past paper attempt for the iStruck D Chartership Membership Examination. This was September 2022 and as you can see on my screen here we're looking at a new hotel development. So I've only done the scheme designs for section one so I'm just going to share those quickly now and essentially my thought process to get you to get me there if you've got any questions or you think I've done something wrong leave them in the comments below and I'll get back to you so when I went through these client requirements I picked up sort of four key items that influenced where I could put my uh, structural elements and those four items were this one here the fact that there was only one internal column permitted within this entrance area for me that meant I needed some transfer structures because I had more columns above that were landing into that particular area so yeah this item here was something that influenced my scheme design and it led to a transfer beam. The next item that influenced my design and I saw it as like a critical item in these client requirements were the fact that yeah there were no internal columns permitted within this particular area. Next we had the minimum spacing of columns so this was another key item and then finally the fact that no bracing was permitted in the south elevation so that yeah we'll use bracing as part of our lateral stability system and on this point eight here they're essentially saying you can't put any bracing on the south elevation so out of all of the client requirements these are the ones that really influence my scheme designs and i wanted to share here if you think I'm missing something, yeah, leave it in the comments and um, I'll get back to you. One thing that I found interesting was the fact that they gave you these minimum internal clearances, but for me, they didn't actually influence any of my scheme designs because if I come up to the architectural drawings, they don't actually dimension and I'm not sure if this is a mistake or they're trying to throw us, but they didn't actually dimension what this floor-to-floor -floor height is. So because they didn't dimension what the floor-to-floor -floor height is, these requirements don't actually influence the, the depth of my beams or slabs. So when I read this and they tell me the minimum internal height requirements, I first think that they're sort of saying, okay, your beams and slabs are limited to a certain depth, but without knowing what the total height of this building is or the floor-to-floor the, the -floor height here, if they tell you what this minimum height here is, you can't actually work out what this minimum dimension here is. If you think I'm missing something, let me know. But yeah, that's the, the conclusion that I came to and that's why it hasn't actually influenced any of my, my scheme to designs. But I'd be interested to hear if a few of you think otherwise. So getting on to the two schemes that I put together and I'll try and be quick with this. So the first scheme is a, a PT flat plate. I varied the thickness of it depending on different areas where it has to span different lengths. And yeah, again, this just come f the, I haven't really done any calculations. They're just general um, rule of thumb guides. So I think for a PT flat plate, it's something like span on 40. These gray shaded boxes here are my uh, shear walls. And I've tried to show some um, general level of sort of knowledge by not completely blocking off the whole uh, core here because obviously to access a lift you can't have a wall going through here. Same with the, the staircase here. Uh, I positioned the core walls to not provide any sort of eccentric or torsional effects um, within my lateral stability system but also satisfying the client requirements by not um, they did say bracing, but I, to me, I'd also just avoid um, shear walls as well because it's essentially the same thing, like glazing. It's, a, it's an architectural requirement. They don't want to see bracing. They also wouldn't want to see a giant concrete wall. 
Um, so yeah, the, the grey boxes around the cores uh, form part of my lateral stability system. It's a critical part of your scheme designs, so yeah, don't forget it. Uh, and I'm just showing here with a, a neat little sketch the um, the bending moments and the, the varying pressures and essentially how my shear wall uh, takes those lateral loads and how it operates. I'm identifying here the requirement of a transfer beam when I spoke earlier. That is addressing this client requirement here where they're saying only one column is allowed within a particular area. So here I'm indicating, okay, here's my one column and this is what I'm doing to deal with it. It's a, it's a transfer beam. And again, it's really important not to ignore the foundation system. So for this foundation, I've gone with a suspended slab off um, some ground beams and I've just commented here and I've drawn it in my section. There was some made ground, so um, yeah, that's not a suitable bearing material. I've just got a note here to replace it with compacted engineered fill. And I'll probably try and draw this a little neater, but essentially there's my suspended slab and here are my ground beams. And I'm not too concerned that the ground beams aren't coming to the, the silty sand because I've replaced the, the made ground, the dodgy stuff with uh, yeah compacted engineered fill. So yeah, in this scheme here, in my opinion, I'm satisfying all of the client requirements. I've got some sensible structural sizes and I've got a scheme that essentially works we can understand the gravity system being the, the PT flat plate coming into the columns and the, the shear walls, which are also capable of taking gravity loads and coming down into our foundation, which is just some a suspended slab on ground bearing beams. And yeah, that's the gravity system. And we can also clearly see what the lateral stability system is and how it operates. So that's scheme one. Um, I do think I would add some yeah, more commentary in the actual exam, but yeah, just to share with you all um, and guide you through my thinking process, that's what I've done here. So moving on to scheme two, I haven't actually drawn the full section here because I ran out of time, but I am showing, as I've mentioned in previous videos, the intent is to show something that's still viable, but is also um, distinctly different. So I've switched up the foundation system here with some with some pad footings instead of the the ground bearing beams. Again, I found that given the the quality of the soil um, piles weren't really necessary, so both of my systems use shallow foundations. So on top of mixing up the foundation system, I've changed the lateral stability system. So here is a braced bay and I'm showing it in plan with these red lines. So again, I'm kind of running it around the areas where the, the core is on the wings and the, and the central core here. And this little sketch here just shows the sort of like, you know, the strut and ties in terms of how the, the bracing takes the loads in actual tension and compression. The grids or the spacing of my columns is significantly different as well as the actual material itself. So instead of having three columns per, per bay, I've gone with two and they've got little cantilevers at the end and I've also switched up the material. So I've got a 200 CLT floor plate. Again, this was just sized off some, some rule of thumbs um, and yeah using some glue lamb columns glue lamb beams and identifying my transfer beam works a little differently it doesn't pick up two columns it actually picks up two beams but I've decided in my concept not to use timber here but to use a steel transfer beam I just figured it would be more economical. But I guess, yeah, that's up to personal preference. I'm sure you could design out a uh, timber beam. I just chose, given the high loads and bendings that all experienced, that it was probably more economical to, to use a steel member here. 
so yeah, that's all I had for for the two schemes. If you've got any questions, um, let them let me know in the comments. Uh, if you like this, please give it a like and yeah, subscribe if you don't want to miss out on any future videos where I run through my past paper attempts. Thanks.